The other good news is that yesterday DAS released version 4.20 of DAS Studio, which nobody saw coming. The beta version 4.16.1 was out for quite a while. And all of a sudden they've surprised us by skipping ahead three versions and saying, here's 4.20. And we're all like, oh, that's interesting. What's actually changed? We have volumetrics now, which is really cool. And that's that's really all we know, that we have them, not necessarily how we need to use them or how we're supposed to use them. So um, I've looked into it and I thought we can start today by doing a little um, little segment of how you get started with volumetrics in DAS Studio. And I can show you a couple of test renders that I've made uh, yesterday. And then really nothing special there. There's something that I just threw together. So this here showcases a new feature that is called the ground fog. And that is down here. So I've just used the library image there, chopped off a wall on the left hand side here, and then went and put this ground fog in there. This now adds a bit of, um, yeah, well, ground fog to the ground plane. And it looks really nice, actually. It looks really cool. There's, there's a lot of um, fine grained opportunity for us to, to add some atmos atmosphere to things. And just to illustrate that it is actually fog and it is volumetric stuff that's happening here, I added some leaves here on the, on the floor. So that's option number one that we now have, ground fog in DAS Studio, which is really cool. So for anything outdoor in the in the misty, you know, when it when it kind of gets going, this is what it looks like. It's kind of cool. Then the other thing is actually a volumetrics shader that we have. And that looks uh, like this. So this is the same scene. And I've put somewhat of a fire in here. It doesn't look fantastic, but it was my first attempt. So don't be too harsh on it. This works different than the uh, ground fog. This is actually a shader that is applied to a volume. And inside the volume, we can then load something called a VDB file, which describes the volumetrics thing that is happening in there. And I think that's a bit of an issue to kind of understand this concept. So iRay just makes the VDB option available as a shader. And then it's up to us to actually find the volumetrics. So much like anything in DAS Studio, it's not for us to create volumetrics from scratch. So we can't build a fire but we can take the description of a fire that is happening in this as part of this uh, VDB file and put that into a shader that then appears inside that volume. So there we go. Frenzy Fire, how you doing? Let's take a look at how we make this happen. And basically these, these two options here. And this happens all in the new DAS Studio 4.20. This has actually been in the beta 4.16.1, uh, but I think the resources needed to be updated. I don't know if we had them. I think that shader wasn't part of it. So when you update to the latest version of DAS Studio, there's also a portion in there in your install manager that will say the DAS Studio default resources need to be updated. And you need to do that because, you know, that's, you know, you've got, you've got, you've got to do that. I'll go and, whoops, no, no, not select layout. I'm going to go and select a single viewport here. I'm going to not use my aspect frame. And I'm going to, let me show you that, uh, let me show you that ground fog first. So that happens maybe with, I'm going to, I'm going to try and post something similar to what I, what I had in the demo image here. I think anything should work. Maybe the 1920 street. The private library, that's the one I used. But anything should uh, should work. Gothic library should also work. Uh, that might be problematic for light. Let's go 1920 Street. Let's do that. 1920 Street. Let's do that. So this looks a little... I'll just go park my camera here because it's just about uh, learning the, the ground fog option here. I'll go and park my camera. Whoops. Somewhat here. I will also, because this looks a little bit blown out, I'm going to go and create myself a filament draw options node just so that I can trim this to about 6,000 so that it doesn't look quite so blown out. So this is more like what it looks like in the in the iRay viewport now. Go back to this. And all these volumetrics are only visible in the iRay viewport, so I can't preview these. But if I go and do this now, if I go switch this over, I shouldn't be seeing anything. I should just be seeing the regular scene. So let me introduce you to the ground fog uh, number one. So the two different things. Ground fog is on the environments tab and the shader for the volumetrics, that's a, that's a different thing. Let's see. I'll leave everything as it is. I'll go onto the render settings tab onto the environments tab here, and I might expand that out. And here's my dome. I could go and, and draw that. It'll appear in the in the background here. Uh, I might go and 
I'll turn it down a little bit to make it a bit more spooky. So point seven maybe just to make it a little bit darker so that the or maybe point five even just so that the ground fog is a bit more visible so right now it's not there but at the bottom here under environment we've got this ground sorry the atmospheric ground option so this is new and if we enable that here then we have a ton of other options that will come out so if i enable that then there's lots of stuff here and immediately you can see that there is some effect happening here and we can now go ahead and tweak that a bit. So literally one click and you've got fog on the ground, which is which is neat, I gotta say. That is that's kinda neat. So without fog, clean as a whistle, I can see all the cobblestones here. And then with fog, it's all foggy. Very exciting, isn't it? So I th I totally like that. I totally like that. If we so these values here, they're not entirely intuitive. I gotta be brutally honest, and I've only just felt my way into this here. Ground fog decay start. I think that is something. If we set that to something higher, then I think it gets it gets bigger. Is that what? It, is that how it happens? Yes, it gets kind of bigger and denser. But there's also the ground fog intensity start scale, and I think you can mess with that as well. So if I go and add some larger value to this like a hundred then i think eventually i just get a thicker type fog there's also the ground fog decay height and the ground fog density and scale so i think if i just increase that maybe we can just make it you know make it taller make it higher that's kind of cool so now it goes almost up to the doors here so play around with that it's kind of a you know there we go Ooh, it's it's all it's like thick thick fog that is it's very nice there's this other thing here as well, matte fog. I think we had that for a while. I think that's not something new, and that's more like an atmospheric fog. So if you add that to it, then you have a bit of a hazy effect going on there. But I don't think this is new. The matte fog, I think we had that already. It's just that the atmospheric ground fog tab here, that's, that is new. So that's kind of cool. Play around with those values. You can also play with the, with the color of the fog, of course. So I think this here is that the actual fog color if we wanted to make that uh, i don't know maybe something like toxic green does that turn green then it no it doesn't it actually just goes away how interesting was this one that then could be that i was i did oh, there we go that's actually the opposite color of what you're selecting here uh, but that's also not what i wanted is it ground fog albedo that's it that's it give me a chance give me a chance is it this yes that turns that into kind of a kind of a toxic fog here maybe use something something a little lighter in case you know there's that the chernobyl has exploded nearby and that's kind of what it looks like now i suppose you know strong saturation is never a good idea so if you do want to introduce a tint then you use something that's not quite as as saturated but yeah there we go that's the ground fog that's kind of part one of the puzzle and i think the default value isn't quite white it's something just a little off white so otherwise it goes and blows out so i think this uh the default value here was something a little bit a little bit like a gray something like that so yeah very nice one click option and you can add atmosphere to outdoor scenes so I, I really like that the second option is actually a little bit more complicated and let me go and uh, switch the ground fog off here and also not use my outdoor scene here i think i'm going to show you this with a much uh, simpler scene that i'll build just for demo purposes i'll go and delete all of this i'm also going to go and switch off my environment dome for the time being here and i'm going to go and create a plane just so that we have something like a ground here so create primitive and i'll make it 50 meters that's that's probably good there we go that's my plane i'll call this one ground just so that we remember what that is i don't think i need my camera anymore either ground plane that's that's here and that's large so that's 50 meters just so that we have something i'll go and create myself another primitive and i'm going to make that a cube just a one meter by one meter cube and i'm going to call that just so that i remember what it is volume and then i'll hit command control f to get in there and that is now my scene it's nothing special but this is where the volume is going to appear inside i might go and I'm going to go and change my ground plane to black just so that I can see that 
a bit better. I might also go and get rid of the glossiness here. That's just for the ground. That's not that's not something uh, not something that's part of the volumetric discussion, but just so that we can see things better. I'm also going to go and bring in one spotlight that will shine at this, so that whenever whatever appears inside here is going to be visible a bit better. So I head over to create a spotlight. I'll leave the default settings in place. Here it is, and I'll just go grab that spotlight put it kind of here up a bit and then down oh that's, that's, uh, that's very sensitive here and then down some like 30 45 degrees something like that nothing spectacular so if I go and render this now I should see oops <laughs> I should see just uh, almost blackness with something like a spotlight shining at this what's currently getting in the way is my environment so i'm going to go and turn that to zero so that everything is black and i'm only seeing the spotlight shining at my cube and it's not quite strong enough i can just about see it's it's doing something but it's not strong enough so i'll go and increase that strength a tad just so that we can see that a little bit better maybe ten thousand maybe twenty thousand is it actually doing something is it doing anything I'll add a zero in there so we can see something. Yeah, I think it's it's doing something. Let me go and put the area up from a point maybe to a disk. So there's something a bit larger. There we go. Cool. So that is something I think we can agree on. We can see the cube. Nice. Don't have to render the emitter there. So cube gets illuminated from here. But there's currently nothing special about the cube. So this this cube here, we're going to go and turn into a volume now. And the way to do this is, in fact, on the Surfaces tab. There is a shader that we need to apply. So on the Surfaces tab, there's this default surface, which is called Volume. That is currently the iRay default shader. And if we go over to my Presets tab here, then I can go, once you have the correct default resources installed, you can go over to Shaders, and then there's iRay here. And in iRay, we have somewhere Effect. That's above Emissive. That's a new category called Effect. And that has that shader in there that we're looking for, the simple Open VDB MDL volume. So the trick here is that iRay has these I, I read things in MDL, MDL material definition language, and it describes how a shader works on the objects that we apply. We can we then go send that all to IRA and IRA goes and makes things happen essentially. So this here it allows IRA to render this VDB volume. And we'll learn more about that in a second. So for now I'll go and apply that, double click, and then my cube gets kind of transparent here. So it's now see-through, and I can see the light shining through and everything. If we go over back to Editor, I can see that my descriptions have changed completely, so it doesn't, it doesn't look anything like the default shader anymore. The thing that we're interested in is under Volume here. That now lets us set some properties that are interesting for our volume. And most importantly, this doesn't show anything because we need to load a file, a VDB file, into this. And we do that over here under Volume File. And you can browse to something that can then go inside that and that then gets displayed. And um, these files, they will come with DAS products. So those are the, the products that you see from Kindred Arts. They're in the current bundle when you, you fly to the moon and stuff. And you can attach kind of rocket smoke to the to the rocket exhaust and everything. So that's that's where that would be. But you can also download these files from sources around the World Wide Web. So one of those is the actual website for the project, which is openvdb.org. And it's, uh, I believe it is a DreamWorks project. And it kind of describes what it is, and it also describes how it's compatible with all these things, including 3D Light and Blender. And they have some sample projects here under Download. So if you scroll down here to Sample Models, then you get to download some of these VDB files, and they can then be loaded into DAS Studio, and then Ira can make them can can make them visible so these things they all look a little bit different when we bring them in i've downloaded a couple here explosion and fire and smoke one and two i think i have these and uh, i can go and show you what happens when i go and load those in so 
that VDB file needs to be browsed to, and I think there's still in my downloads folder, like fire, if we stick with fire, or let's stick with smoke, smoke number one. I'll go and load that in, open that, and then seconds later, we have smoke. And the cube itself doesn't get rendered, just the thing inside it. And it's it's a little bit difficult to see when you bring it in for the first time. There's also, I think the, the cube intersects a little bit with my ground plane. I'm just going to go and take the ground plane and just move it down just a notch here that we don't see that that cube on the on the bottom so translate i'm going to put that to just a casual minus one and then that should should get rid of that perfect so back to my volume and my surfaces tab on volume we've got all these settings here to play with so if this isn't dense enough you can go and change the density multiplier if this is either not if, if you want to make it more transparent set it to something lower then it gets you know kind of blended in more you can have multiple of these things around and also if i had not made my whoops if i had not made my ground plane so rough we'd now see a reflection in that as well i might actually do that if i go and put the ground planes glossy roughness back to zero then i see i see a nice reflection here at the bottom that's kind of cool so if you render that out it's kind of nice effects that you can make um, with that this just reflects that now I'm going to go undo that so that we can just see the uh, the smoke better here. I'll go back to volume. And then on the other hand, if you make it higher, so like, you know, a lower value will make it kind of more see-through and blend in more with the uh, with the environment here. If this wasn't black, you'd see the, the color uh, behind it. You can also make that stronger. If you needed a stronger effect and really pronounced foggy smoke type thing, Gavin, that's good to see. Sometimes we just need to take breaks, don't we? So yeah, this is a brand new feature. They've, they've literally launched this yesterday officially. Sometimes you have to make it a bit uh, stronger. You can also change the color properties here of that with the scattering multiplier, absorption multiplier, and the scattering offset and absorption. These things, I think if you change those, the unpredictable effects will happen uh like that so it almost goes a little blocky on the outside so um one of those things use at your own behest i'd, I'd usually i'd probably leave those on here this one i think that inverts the color somehow bizarrely yeah there we go that kind of inverts the color so i don't really know exactly what's going on there uh, but yeah this is now basically the complementary color of what i've just selected one of those things um if you wanted to make that show up something like uh, like a reddish color if you wanted to make that happen then you set it to the opposite color and then if you wanted to make this glow like a fire you just put a point light in the middle maybe we'll do that um, in a minute because um, let me just load another one i'll just go and bring this back to uh, to the default here scattering multiply let me just go and change that to something else just testing out some of the values that actually changes the color that's cool that's good to know and it changes the color that I'm selecting there as well. Also neat. Medium gray is going to make that go back. And then this one here, what does that do? That, again, does kind of the almost the opposite um, end of the color spectrum. I, I don't really know much about these properties, so... <laughs> I'll go bring it back to this. Let me go and load in a fire now. So a different file up here. Browse to not smoke but maybe oh explosion let's try explosion so as you change that the shape of the actual thing will change like that so it goes boom and then you can scale the volume make it smaller make it bigger but you can only ever preview that in uh, iray so if you go back to filament then you know it, it's, it looks like nothing's happening here or texture shaded same thing it doesn't really preview these things it just shows the transparent volume that's all we see <laughs> We are indeed, yes, we're trying the new, uh, I thought this is a good segment to uh, to try, we're trying the new volumetrics option in DAS Studio. I'm going to make this a little uh, excerpt so I can post it on my channel as a, you know, getting started with volumetrics, just so that we're all on the same, on the same plane of existence so that we know uh, how this thing actually works. Let me know. Volume channel is something else. You can apparently type something in here. I don't know what that, what that's going to what that's going to do but you know that we can do that but this is the the real clincher here the open vdb file here that's what we need to do so let me go ahead to load in that fire that i've downloaded from the open vdb website 
And if I do that, you'd expect there to be a fire, but sadly, there's no fire. I mean, it's, it's certainly smoke, and we've seen how we can change the properties of that so that we can maybe make it look a bit like a fire, but it certainly isn't a fire. So that's interesting to remember. If I look at the original here, that's, that is kind of what that looks like. And it has smoke and it has flames and stuff, but in that studio, that doesn't appear to be in there. But I've examined it and it is actually inside the file. So the file does contain these descriptions. I just have a feeling that iRate doesn't quite support those yet. So if I load in the same this this same VDB file into Blender, we have other properties to play with, something like the black body radiation and the heat of the object. And as we increase and decrease those, that fire effect actually comes out. But that is not something I see in DAS Studio right now. So I have a feeling that's probably not on here because um, DAS Studio doesn't quite support that. So in order to circumnavigate that, we can go and uh, do pretty much what we did before here and set this. If I wanted to turn this into an actual fire now, not just in a puff of smoke, I suppose I can put this into something like a, like a, maybe like an orangey thing so that it, it glows a bit, it glows a bit um, as if it's like a fire, maybe more like a, more like a yellow here, something like, something like that. Maybe, you know, I don't know, it's kind of fantasy here. Maybe I'll make it a bit darker. And then I can just add other objects to it. So I could go ahead and say I'll create myself a point light. Apply the default settings here. Point light is going to be just right there in the middle and I'll just go and bring that up a bit so that it sits kind of at the at the bottom there. And then I'll go and maybe add... So it's, we have to use our creativity, our creative thinking to, to make that happen now. Maybe I'll make that 10,000 as well. So now we have that little light at the bottom. And it's game engines kind of fake it the same way. They fake lights and fire the same way. So if I now... Now I have the, the fire glowing a little bit. And I suppose now also if I go and make that red-ish... Then we have these two two kind of colors here. So that is now a fire, and that's kind of cool to, to see. But we have to, it's not just the volumetrics, and the volumetrics themselves of the VDB file in Blender will actually show this effect up as dramatically as we've seen it here. So it has, you know, it's, it's um, sadly, I can't make that bigger. Uh, I can't click on that as a, as a preview thumbnail here. So, but uh, like this is the same thing. It would go and show you actually the colors on the inside there, but that studio currently doesn't do that. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping this is going to be implemented in a future version, but yeah, this is, this is how we get started with the ground fog. That was the thing that we find under the render settings tab, just a quick recap under environment, atmospheric ground fog. We can go and enable that. And I think I've now, I've kind of ruined it, haven't I? I'm just going to go back, bring back the default settings. So that's now going to add this haze on the floor. That's the volumetrics option number one. And that adds a really nice effect to all our outdoor uh, landscapes. That's just a one click on the environment, like under the render settings, environment, atmospheric, ground fog. And then to get this thing going, to load VDB files, we bring in a primitive or any geometry that'll work, anything that you can put a shader on. I've created a cube here, so create new primitive and then make it a cube. The, with the cube selected on the surfaces tab, you'll select the surface and head over either to presets and then under shaders, you go into iRay and then in IRA you have effects and that's the simple open VDB MDL volume that we can put on there. It's also in the content library, by the way, if you wanted to um, find it from there. It's both there and in the smart content tab. So I think it's uh, in here, my DAS Studio library. And then it is in shader presets and then it's in IRA and then it's in DAS volume. That's where you find that. So it's same same file, you can apply it from there. Or you can go into the Smart Content tab, I believe. And then here with that unticked under Filter by Context, unticked, you head into Shaders, I believe. And there's iRay. And then the same thing applies here. So there's Effect. And then you have the default resources, which this is part of. And then in there, you have the simple Open VB MDL volume. You slap that on your geometry. And then under surfaces back on the editor tab 
under the volume tab, you can go and load the VDB file in, and then you can play around with that. Play around with these values here and see what they do. And if you need some sample files to get started, you can use the openvdb.org website, which tells you a little bit about the project. Not much, I must say. I mean, they, they don't even tell you what the acronym actually stands for. VDB, I, it appears it's the volume database and it describes how the actual volume looks like. And you can use that in various applications. Now Das Studio as well, which is kind of cool. Tells you here about and form documentation, which is very, very technical. But on the downloads tab, they have some sample files. And those are all zip files. If you unzip that, it has a VDB file. And then last but not least, of course, you have also got uh, ready to go products from the DAS store that you can also use. And the current one, oh yeah, actually right on the front page here. That's where it tells you more about it. And uh, this here, learn more, I believe that goes and tells you more about this. There's also a blog post that describes more about this. And on this page, you will also see this new bundle here, which is the Countdown to Launch Mega Bundle. And in one of them, KA Rocket Launch VDB. That's it. So VDB, if you look for that, you can also search for VDB files on the internet. I think there's some products on ArtStation available that literally just give you the VDB file. And eventually we'll be able to create those ourselves. Uh, via Open VDB, I think it's the Open Volume Database. That's the project that that essentially is standard that describes volumes. OpenVDB.org. I'll put that in the description so you that you're on the same page. It's also on the Discord in the Das Extra channel. That's where that is. So this here, that is a product that view product that contains presets for that. If we go and look at these um, very cinematic pictures, these are all the the VDB files that he includes with it. But be aware, the fire effects, those are actually mesh lights. So the, that's not a volumetric, that's a mesh light. And that in combination with the gray puff of cloud and the puff of smoke and stuff, that is that those are the actual volumetrics and all everything that glows here is a mesh light. So he says that on the product page as well. So this is not something we can currently do. But if I expand on this and if I find out more about it, I can go and show you how this works in Blender. Uh, you can load VDB files in Blender and you actually can create these effects directly in Blender. So I'm kind of hoping that eventually we're going to go and get those types of parameters in DAS Studio because VDBs can also describe not just smoke, they can also describe liquid volumes and, and stuff like that. So there's, there's all kinds of things as well as colors. So that can all be done. But Currently, we don't have that. And that is it. That is all I know about VDBs in Das Studio and Volumetrics. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you get to play around with this yourself and make, you know, make little fires like this. Fantastic. I'm glad I could share this with you.